Good afternoon, good morning, uh, maybe good evening, wherever you are. I am Isabel and welcome to Rue Pigalle. The In Conversation, we're starting again. It's our second year. Uh, we started in March last year, so maybe it's uh, season two, you can say. And the purpose of the In Conversation is to bring you in the studio of artists and makers who, as I always say, are extremely important um, cogs of our community. Today, our guest is Sophie Theodos, who is uh, an illuminator, a contemporary illuminator. So Sophie, welcome. Uh, you are based in Paris and you are a contemporary illuminator. Uh, illumination, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct, started in the, uh, the seventh, sixth century, seventh century, and it started very much in terms of um, highlighting, decorating, but also narrating stories on uh, parchments. Obviously, it started with the Bible because that's really what uh, was the main book. Uh, but it has evolved a lot since then. As we can see, you have nothing of a monk and the room you are in really doesn't look like <laughs> a dark room where we uh, always imagine the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the scribes and the illuminators to work. But um, you were not always an illuminator. How did you start? Oh, before I was working for fashion, uh, and haute couture at Dior yeah. and Balmain. Then, uh, then I, ch I decided uh, decided to change and become a monk. <laughs> <laughs> so no, you did. How, how, how did you discover the um, the art of illumination? Uh, oh, uh, uh, in fact, I um, I never discovered because. Um, uh, I was always with illumination around me. It, it's just it's just surprising to say that. But um, when I went to the church on Sunday, every Sunday, I used to see beautiful illumination. illumination. So for me, it was usual to see all the building around and uh, beautiful paper, beautiful books all around. So it was not a surprise for me. And it was a surprise for me to discover that it was not so usual for everybody. When I was young, I thought that everybody were like me, surrounding with books illuminated. All right. <laughs> yes, that must have come as a surprise, I imagine. And um, so, you, but you always had that very creative side. I mean, the haute couture, um, you had your own business you represented um, uh, you represented uh, makers or you represented uh, fabric what was your uh, your business exactly oh well uh, at the end i was representing uh, uh, french um, how can i say that uh, marine ocean c'est quoi sorry uh, it's a, a distributor like you know, yeah, this big distributor. It was not it, at the end. It was no more uh, haute couture. It was a very uh, um, common fashion, you know. And right. I was okay. The, well, it was okay. not the same, and that's why maybe I was tired of fashion, and mm -hmm. it was time for me to go back to my life, the real life for me. So, how did you learn the uh, the art? Oh, it was quite um, quite funny because um, I was looking for uh, a school, but I was much too old. I was 35 with three children and nobody wants me. And, um, and finally, I came to Benoit Cazel, uh, who is an uh, illuminator in Normandy. And he, starting, he started to say to me, no way! I don't give. Uh, I don't give any lesson. Um, so I had to. I had to push him to accept. 
and he told me if it if it if he, uh, if it is only for pleasure no thank you but if you want to become an illuminator it's okay you can come and that's why i started i had i had to become an illuminator i was no other choice <laughs> Right. <laughs> and and uh, clearly he had um, uh, very little patience for, uh, for amateurs who were not totally dedicated uh, to the art. Sorry, I didn't understand. He, he really wanted to dedicate yourself to the art yeah. And, yeah. and and give it, give it your all passion. Yeah. How long did it take you to, uh, to learn from him? How many years were you his pupil? Oh... Uh... Uh, around three years. The the, big, three. the the longer one was the first because I, I had to to learn how to use gold, and it and um, it was always no no you are not good it's not okay it's not okay you have to start it again again and again and during one year he always say no. Then finally after one year he started to say well it's not too bad, go ahead, and at the end of the End of uh, at the end of the three the last year with three years later he started to say okay I don't want to see you anymore <laughs> right yeah so I mean it it is we're going to go through uh, the various steps of creating um, a, a piece and I think that in your case um, it's really a craft because the technique and the skills are really very important to the result. Um, the artistic intent obviously is important, but the skills um, and the, the very um, minute work and the patience it requires take years and years of practice to, uh, to acquire. So let's, um, um, I'm going to be sharing uh, my screen uh, with, and we're gonna go and see um, Can you see my screen with the slides? Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are the first uh, steps. Uh, I've put four images here. If we start on the top left, here you've received, I guess, the raw material. Can you tell us a little bit about this, the material you use to create the, uh, uh, the yeah. piece? This is parchment. And the parchment is in fact a goat skin, baby goat skin, something like that. And um, it was used instead of paper in the Middle Age. Uh, and I'm always working on it. Um, now it's a waste project. Uh, if I don't, uh, and thanks to the parchment maker, it become a, a luxury project, a very, very beautiful one. And uh, um, they know they they know how to give new life to this uh, waste material. And right. I have a one with me. Don't worry, I'm coming back. Well, we can't see you because I'm sharing my screen. Are you showing us um, showing something? Showing a piece so. of parchment. But if you don't see, I will not show you. No, no, that. I'll I'll just stop sharing. Okay, so show it to us. This is a small one. This is a small parchment. I hope you can see it. Uh, yeah. when, um, this is a baby, baby goat skin. When I'm using the real goat skin, it's um, bigger. And I, I have around one meter square with me. I have to cut. In, in. That's, okay. uh, this is the parchment. Sorry, my so English. Not so good. <laughs> That's all right. So I read somewhere that um, uh, the initial um, uh, material that was used was vellum. And vellum uh, was, in fact, the skin of the stillborn calf. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, exactly. But now we are not allowed anymore to use this sort of, uh, of skin. Uh, we, OK. You cannot find anything. You cannot find it at all. Okay. Finished. All right. Perfect. So let's go back to uh, the um, uh, images here. So you receive it, it's rolled and it's ready. You have to open it, you have to flatten it. Is that right? Yes, because each, each skin is unique. 
So uh, maybe one is uh, really white. Maybe one has got uh, some cicatrices, you know, on it. Maybe some marks, one, yeah. Yeah. Maybe one is um, ivory. It depends. Each each skin is really really different. So when I have to to do something, I have to choose the best one. Which one will be the best for the project? Project. Right. It's not like a paper a sheet of paper, you know. The one, the second, and the third is, are always the same. Uh, 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 on my case, uh, on my oh yes, in my case, the, the parchment is really really different. So I, I really have to find the one specially made, for, for specially who will who will match specially with the, my product. Mm. And then you have to prepare it. We can see on the right there, um, you are uh, applying some treatment to the uh, to the skin. Yeah, I have some special powder. Uh, this is, uh, I will have to say it in French because I'm sorry, I really don't know in, in, uh, in English. I have to use some... Um, oh, but did you in Francais? Oui. Hausse um, de sèche. Oh, it's um, um, sepia, uh, sepia bone. Yeah. Squid, bo squid bone, the dried squid bone. And it's a uh, powder, isn't it? Yes, I have to put it in powder. Then I right. mix some sandarac. Sandarac is um, in sève de bois. Um, mm -hmm. Sap from the wood, yes. Yeah. Et uh, de la pierre ponce en poudre. And, and stone powder. So you're mixing the, um, uh, the sepia bone, yeah. Yeah, and I have to roll my foot, uh, put my hand along a, a, a few, few minutes on the skin to make sure that the skin is really soft and um, white, white and the touch must be perfect. And I cannot, okay. I, I can't see it with my hi I, I only the touch is the, is the is the best way to to see i, I can see it with my hand um right <laughs> so it's it's a very tactile um uh, yeah. well i guess I, with the this the skin is tactile and uh, so yeah. you've prepared the skin and then you are the next step is that you're almost ready to start drawing correct yes i have to draw with black ink because the skin Skin is greasy, you know, so I cannot use any pen or something like that. The only way to write or to draw is with the black ink. That's why you can see on okay. the on the computer. So, so do you do a, a drawing first and then you apply it to the skin? What we're looking at here is that your template that you're going to copy on the skin. No, this is my drawing. This, this is your drawing different. directly on the skin. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it's very small. This this sample is very very small. The one behind is much bigger. Yeah, we're going to come to that um, the, uh, after the because it's... in the beginning in the Middle Age and um, uh, uh, the 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 design was very 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 small because it had to to be inside books. Um, then. We can be, be better and bigger and bigger, not a problem. Yeah. yeah. So you do your drawing. drawing. Um, next step, we are looking here. So your drawing is done. The On the left, the gilding. Uh, there is several ways to put gold, gold leaves on, um, on uh, illumination. Uh, you can put in on the only way. Uh, uh, on mordant, which uh, with uh, you use a glue, sort of glue, and the gold leaf comes flat, very, very flat. And the one you can see here is uh, with gesso, who gives some puffy effect. And uh, this gesso must be put um, carefully, and you have to wait 12 hours to make it really dry. Then you use um, uh, uh, I get stone to, I don't know the name, to, to finish the, to finish. 
and the, can, you can put the gold on uh, on the gesso. It yeah, takes so a long, long time to, to when you want to make um, gilding like that, you have to more, you have to spend one or two days minimum. You cannot do. Uh, it, it must. It, it takes a long time. It, it's it's really long. Right, because so you create the relief by first putting yes. the gesso, which yes. is what we see on the left. Exactly. It has to dry, and then and then you put the the gold on the right. You polish it first, and then you put yes. the gold, which is what we see on the right. Before and after, and this polish makes the the gold bright, really, very really bright. Mm -hmm. In the uh, illumination uh, uh, seems really uh, awful in the end. This is surprising because you know uh, maybe you can imagine that uh, doing illumination is uh, immediately beautiful. Your drawing is immediately beautiful. No, it's wrong. Your drawing is not so beautiful. The gold uh, seems not so beautiful. Uh, okay, it's shining, but well, it's just gold, you know, and you have to go step by step, make sure in your mind that you are on the wrong, you are on the right way, but you have to be really confident because till the end, it looks like not so beautiful. And it's going to be beautiful at the end, really at the end. So, you know, maybe most of the time in the middle of my work, I said, why do I start with this sort of project is so well? And I have to say to me, hello, hey, hey, you have to go away and finish. That's why. So all the, all the design you will see, you, you will, maybe you will think that, uh, okay, it's not so beautiful. That's my life. It's not so beautiful. <laughs> It's not so beautiful until it is beautiful. <laughs> um, can we? But you know, really, for all, all the days I'm working on my gold or I'm working on my colors, it's not so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have. Um, <laughs> Uh, we have um, on the call Kate Lewis, who is also an artist who was um, my guest a few weeks ago, and she just put a message saying uh, she can relate to what you uh, you are expressing as uh, as an artist. Uh, I think a lot of uh, artists do that. Um, can we take Can we talk for a second about the uh, the gold? Um, yeah. The the gold leaf is extremely extremely fine. Uh, can you tell us where do you buy it? How does it come to you? Talk to us a little bit about the gold. Yeah, the gold, um, um, till last year, um, I was buying my gold leaves in France in the, the, the la latest uh, gold batter. The last, the last gold uh, hammer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last gold factory, and um, unfortunately, this factory uh, is closed now. But uh, I'm very proud to say that till last year, my gold, my gold leaves were coming from France, and it's a real pity for me that now I have to buy it in Germany or in Italy. But uh, it's not a problem. But I was so proud to have uh, on my illumination. The, the really latest um, gold factory that the, yeah. the name of the factory was Dove. Mm. And um, it's um, frankly speaking, I, 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 I was, uh, I cried when I uh, learned the bad news. That's mm. why. <laughs> so, but the, to make these um, uh, very fine gold leaves, it's actually a hammering process. It's not yes. a rolling, it's not, it's no, a real no, hammering, no. hammering. Yes, you, you put some different layer of gold and with a very, very big hammer, you have to tap and tap and tap, then, uh, then you turn and again and again and again and then you turn and again and again and again. It was uh, only main uh, main job, and the main was uh, I had to change arm, you know, because they cannot use only the right hand. 
we have to also use the left one and to change the hammer side, they are launching the hammer and catch him on the, you know, in the hair. And then uh, it's, uh, it was quite not funny, but it was a horrible job, really. It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. It was like a dance, but it was absolutely horrible for shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, let's go back now to, uh, it's one of these, unfortunately, sad stories of, of a, a craft and a tradition that is dying, but it's almost impossible to keep it alive because it is so um, crafty and, and rare and so few people um, uh, use it. So uh, let's go back to uh, your work and um, your beautiful technique. So here you have applied the uh, gesso and you've polished it and you've applied the uh, leaf and are you busy polishing the leaf there is that what we're seeing uh on the left you can see that i'm kissing my gold leaf and in fact no not at all i'm not kissing i just put some uh, breath yes you, you breathe on, on it yes i'm breathing just be, to make a small Humidity, uh, humidity. Yeah, humidity. Humidity. And to make sure, because um, the gold leaf is, uh, uh, is, um, is catching the humidity and it's the best way to, to glue the gold. Right. So by breathing on it, you're creating um, uh, 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 that, that humidity and it helps to the gold to adhere to the gesso. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, you must have a serious, um, <laughs> you, 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 you blow on it every day. That's the only way to do it. I, I, I tried many, many way, uh, different way. There's uh, water or something like that, or, but no, there is nothing, 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 nothing else. You really have to breathe like your what <clears throat> like cleaning your your, your glasses. glasses you really have to put some yeah. breath and right. uh, at the end of the day you know you are <laughs> <laughs> um and is that that humidity does it also help in the polishing process or it's just no, for the gluing to put gold you have to create humidity and to polishing after it must be really, really dry. So between the, the, the two, the two um, steps uh, process, you have to stop and you wait. You wait a few minutes. Maybe you have, half, you, you, you have to wait one, a half an hour or one hour. It depends on, on time. Uh, if it is summer, if it is winter, if it is hot inside, if it is wet. Uh, so I have to take care about all my environment 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 um, uh, for example when it's stormy it is it is not uh, a good idea to make illumination uh, it will be or it will be, it will be horrible so the i don't i, I cannot uh, illuminate when it is stormy the the weather is too wet really too wet right yeah too humid yeah yeah mm. So next so it, step, what's happening yeah. here? This is the polishing process with the agate. Right. Okay. So the gold leaves are on the, the, the gesso and the, um, the gold is now uh, dry. Yes, dry. And I'm using my agate with this sort of, uh, this is the agate. This is on the, the only part interesting is there and um, sometimes it is bigger sometimes it is thinner but with this sort of uh, stone i have i can polish really really uh, strongly the gold and is be and it becomes so bright so shiny uh, better than the uh, ring right okay um, it's fascinating that you you use a stone to polish gold um, and this is the only uh, uh um we if you want to 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 
put gold on JSO, if you don't have any uh, agate, uh, you will not make good things. Without agate, we cannot put gold. It's like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't, there's no, um, uh, oh, there's a question here. Linda is asking, uh, do you put anything on the gesso before putting the gold on? No, everything is inside the gesso. The, um, the gesso is a sort of um, cream, a creamy product. And inside you have some honey, inside you have some special glue, inside you have some uh, water and mixing all together, um, it's, uh, it's uh, enough for the gold to, uh, to, to stick. To a deer, to a deer, deer, yes. Ooh, that's okay. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I mean, what I find fascinating is that um, with a stone, you are polishing that gold and you don't uh, take away the, um, uh, the gold when you polish it like that. Oh, uh, in fact, it depends. Um, I have to, 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 come on, come. maybe some of gold is, uh, the gold leaf is bigger than my gesso. So this little piece, I can collect, uh, I, I will collect them uh, and then I will use for something else. But um, for the, uh, when, you, you, when you use gold, uh, you, all, you, you always have to use bigger leaf than, uh, than the subject. So always there is some wasted uh, gold. Of course, you will not throw it on the, on the rubbish bin. So you have to take it uh, um, and use it for something else. And I'm using, I'm using all, all um, I'm using always my gold. Uh, I, I will never throw my, sure. my gold. It's so, so expensive that I cannot open the door here. <laughs> so on the right, we're seeing a finished piece here. Yeah. Is it, um, are we seeing gold and silver or is it just the lighting on the photo? No, it's, it is two different gold, the yellow one in the middle and the white gold on the uh, all around. The outside. Yeah. Right, okay. Because silver um, is really difficult to use, not because it is, uh, uh, it is less expensive, but uh, uh, it becomes black very, very quickly. So it's not a good idea to use um, silver. Okay. It is better to so, use white gold. Mm -hmm. So it's a trick. If we, uh, if we go and, uh, and want to buy something, an object of, uh, of art with illumination, if it looks um, like dark and silver, it means uh, it's not gold, it's silver. I mean, it means yeah. we shouldn't buy it, <laughs> probably. Oh. <laughs> see it very very quickly it's easy, very easy to see that it is not gold <laughs> okay um, so here we're seeing um, uh, we going back a little bit uh, in the step in the process because you have the colors so you've put the gold there but this piece also has other colors in the gold yeah um, um, as, as I said before the it is not beautiful and this is the first step of my color. I have to, uh, um, I have to put my color in one lay. Every, uh, uh, everywhere, I don't have to make some... Oh, mon Dieu, comment je vais dire ça? Um, Dites-moi en français, je traduirai. No different shade. The red must be red, everywhere. Yeah, so there's no, there's no different tones of one mm -hmm. color. The colors are pure and full and you apply them one after the other, the full color. So here we can see it's the full red, bleeding red. And then you put colors on another color and another color and another color. So at the end, it's going to be okay. But for the moment, this is the first step, my intense red. Right, so we can see here, um, I, mean, I know that we, you're doing something else, but we can see here the various layers of the various colors. Mm. And you so can see also at the end. That step oh, here that you, uh, the step that you're doing here with the white, can you explain that to us? This is the hand of my 
um, elimination. And this is the last part, which finally it will maybe become beautiful at the end. So uh, uh, you have to highlight, highlight, yes, exactly. You will capture the light with the white, white color and maybe with the black color too. Uh, this big contrast will really bring the light on the illumination. And um, maybe you will see on the, my, my, my red circle, circle uh, some, sometimes you can see some white, uh, un très blanc. Yeah, a white, a white um, um, a line that highlights the color the same as the black does. Yeah, exactly. And this big contrast is participating to the light of the illumination. With, without black, without white, it's not finished and it's not... Um... It, it won't shine. It exactly. won't have the same life and it won't catch the light. Uh, exactly. the same way. So we, we can see some other uh, pieces here. Uh, let's start with the left because I think we can really see here the black um, uh, line uh, highlighting around the gold elements, um, which is so fantastic. So one of your um, incredible talent is that you have taken illumination from the traditional parchment and you have created a new world, a new technique by applying it. We can see on the left on a stone, on the right, I think it's paper or is, what is it on the right? The flower, is it? Uh, the flower is, it... is made in, with parchment. Yeah. And this flower is put uh, on the, here, on the right. And the, the face, the small face here is in paper. And in the paper you can see is in stucco. We have a question from Molly. What pigment do you use? Gouache, watercolor, ink? This is, um, it depends. Uh, a natural pigment or extra fine gouache. N nothing else. Do you mix your, do you mix your colors yourself? Oh, it, no. Uh, if it is pigment, it is pigment. If it is gouache, it is gouache. Uh, it's not very uh, comfortable to you to mix the different, um, the both. And uh, pigments are really, really difficult to, to, to use when you are doing big, big size uh, illumination. Uh, why is that? Sorry? Why is it difficult to use on big because, oh, size? Because the pigment, uh, the pigment um, uh, is uh, a powder that you have to, and you have to prepare a sort of painting with the pigment. And uh, this, um, this yon, um, I don't know the name in English, sorry, right. uh, is made with egg, water, vinegar. Uh, in fact, you open the fridge and you, are, you, know, you can prepare your painting, but it's, um, it's, it, you cannot keep it very long uh, it, it becomes dry very, very quickly. So if, if you started to, do, to, to paint something big, you, you, you will never, it's not really comfortable. In fact, it's not comfortable at all and it's very hard and the result is not so good. So it is better to use gouache for big illumination and pigment for small one. Okay. That's because of the lion. Right. Yeah, it, it just doesn't, um, uh, it's too much to make and it doesn't keep long enough for you to have the time to, uh, to create the, the piece. Uh, we're just going to look at a few more pieces that you have created, which are, I think are absolutely extraordinary. Um, tell me a little bit about that stone. What, what gave you the idea of, of putting illumination on a stone? What was the artistic intent there? Well, uh, one of my um, uh, inspiration source, uh, source of inspiration. Right. Source of inspiration. Yes, yeah, source of inspiration is uh, the sea. And um, uh, I met somebody uh, who, who learned me how to, 
create um, pebble in stucco. The, the, pebble, the pebble you see is not a real stone, it's made in stucco, in plaster. Yeah. And all the marbure, marbling, marbling um, gives. Um, in fact, yeah. when you see something, you cannot explain exactly why it suddenly you you see exactly what you will put on this part uh, because you receive some uh, emotion, some feeling, and here uh, it was sure for me that. From this part of the stucco, uh, uh, the, the coral must grow. It was like that. I, I have created this stucco, and then I see, after seeing the marbling, I, uh, uh, it was not a decision, it was a feeling. It was obvious. You had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no choice. <laughs> Um, here, this you won. Uh, I believe you won a prize for this uh, for this piece. Um, it's a. I, I just showed a detail, uh, the very big piece. I think I have put on the website, but I wanted I've to show the detail because it is such incredible, um, minute, detail, precise work that must have taken you days to create this. Ha. Uh, uh... The story of this piece is uh, quite funny. Um, uh, I have seen a um, uh, pont peacock. A peacock, yes. A peacock uh, in the countryside. And uh, I, this uh, animal was so beautiful. I decided to make a peacock, an illuminated peacock. Then uh, okay, peacock, uh, you can draw it, it becomes flat and nothing happens. So I wanted to have the same effect, you know, when you see a peacock with a big draw and uh, behind, it's beautiful. And I wanted to, to create the same effect, something like that, with big effects, something there behind. So the only solution I found is to create uh, les plumes, comme on dit les plumes. Pardon? Les plumes, on dit comment les plumes? Feathers. Ah, voilà. To create the feathers uh, one by one and to cut one by one all the small parts to make it like that, you know. And I put all the feathers like this. And if maybe you can have a look. I'm back, I'm back, don't worry. Maybe this is my peacock. Right. It's amazing. It's incredible. So a piece like that, um, you would try to, to sell it. And I'd like to um, bring in the conversation um, uh, your agent. And I'm hoping that um, uh, Marine Costello is here. So you actually um, have decided that, uh, Sophie, you decided not to work with um, not to work with a gallery maybe, but instead you chose to have an agent, which is not a very common thing to do um, for an artist or for a craft person. And um, your agent uh, is Akat Bourdrez, who unfortunately uh, cannot join us today because she's extremely busy having a baby right now. Uh, and uh, she... <laughs> Uh, instead, she asked um, uh, uh, one of her colleagues, Marine Costello, who's here to join us. So Marine, uh, it would be wonderful if you could share with us um, the role of an agent and the relationship between the agent and the artist. Of course. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And hello, ladies. It's nice to meet you all. Um, so uh, as Isabel said, I'm filling in for Agathe. Um, who is uh, very, very uh, lovely and motivated, but also very, very pregnant at the minute. Um, so she asked her friendly neighborhood American to uh, talk to you ladies tonight. So what an agent does, it, it, this is a question that, you know, I get gets all the time. So she created her agency, Tout un art. So in, in English, it would sort of translate to, it's an art, you know. 
it's a French expression. Uh, she created the agency in, um, in 2018, so three years ago now, because she realized there was a real need in, in art. She was actually a maker herself. She, had a, she, she went through a whole course in uh, upholstery. So not only is she an agent, but she also knows how to make a mean chair. Um, and so her colleagues told her, well, okay, could you, could you help out with communication? Could you help out with events? Because she so happened to have worked in public relations. So an agent's role is really diverse and, and very much depends on the artists. So in the case of Kitanar, there's, there's quite a few artisans and makers and artists in, in the realm of the agency. Um, Sophie joined Tutanar um, a few months ago um, because she met she met Agat on social media actually, um, so that's that's very much something that keeps us connected at the minute with what we're doing now. And the role of the agent is is to sort of help the artist devote all their time to creating. So as Sophie explained, you know you saw that her process is so time consuming and and she, what an artist wants to do is spend as much time as they want making so where i get comes in is promotion um handling events creating partnerships just like what we're doing now you know to promote what um, makers are doing for some of them organizing gallery shows for others putting them in touch with interior decorators. So really taking the artist where they are and seeing what's the best approach to bring their career to where they want to be. Um, and that can also be, you know, collaborating with brands. So um, she works with sculptors, she works with painters, she works with a wonderful illuminator, which we have tonight in the person of Sophie. Um, and, and for instance, that can become, you know, uh, redecorating a flagship store, um, which happened for a luxury brand in Singapore. So getting these artists, really big deals. For Sophie, it has been a lot of help with sales, for instance, and for, um, you know, promotion in media and social media or in talks like this one. Mm. Sophie, thank you, uh, Marine. Sophie, what uh, has been the impact um, on you in, on, on your practice in terms of uh, uh, when you uh, you connected with uh, Tutanar? I know that you've actually never met because um, of the um, the confinement, um, which you know is is one more hurdle. But um, did you feel that? you know, a big weight was coming off your shoulders because someone was going to take care of the sales and promotion? Or did you feel that you really wanted to be involved in that still? Or how, how, how do you view that? Uh, in fact, uh, when, um, when I started to work with Agathe, my first feeling was, finally, I'm no more alone. You know, when you, when you are working all the day in your warehouse and you have, you don't, as, as Marin said, uh, I have only two hands and um, the day is only 12 hours. So at the end of the day, uh, it, uh, when you are exhausted and you, you are sure that you have to make, uh, you have, uh, you, you, I'm, I don't have any enough time for me. So to be, to, to be with Agathe, it gives me more mm, more time, more confidence, more confidence, and at least I can just give her a call saying that what do you think of, and she tell me, no way, forgive that, or of course you have to, and she's pushing you, you know, and even if you are tired, oh okay, you go ahead. So uh, it's uh, it's really important to uh, to to be. Um, very close from uh, with uh, with your agent, and that's why I um, I'm in the uh, I never worked before with any agent because I could uh, I didn't find the 
good one for me. <laughs> right, right. It's very important to, to have a good relationship uh, with your agent. With your, mm. You have to be really confident with her. Yeah. A big, a big trust and, um, and a, a real, yeah. be very simpatico. Uh, yeah. So um, we're almost at the end of our, uh, of our hour. So um, if there are any questions, um, please put them in the chat box. I'd like to ask you, um, what are you working on now? And what's, what are your, where's your inspiration coming for the, uh, the upcoming months? What's happening? How are you, um living what we are going through now is it are you one of these artists that finds great inspiration in being cut off from the world and just being able to concentrate on your work or are you absolutely missing the enrichment that we get from seeing people going places <laughs> what kind of artist are you oh uh i have to work to have inspiration uh, uh, uh um when I'm doing, when I'm making one uh, illumination, I'm already thinking of the next. Right. It's always that. Uh, I have to paint to, to have a new idea. I'm painting on, uh, for example, a red one, and I'm already thinking of the blue one. Uh, and uh, today I'm happy, so my, my illumination will be uh, tonic and uh, uh, in fact, even if I don't have in the, I'm not okay, I'm not feeling good, the, the, the best way for me to be happy is to take my brush and it comes. So, but, <laughs> but um, I can't spend two, three, four days with, without doing anything because I have no ideas. And, uh, but I'm not, I'm not afraid about that. I'm taking a brush and then I, I'm starting to work and immediately I have one, two, three, four, five ideas. So I have to, to organize and to plan everything because I cannot do anything in the same moment. But uh, it's coming like that. For the moment, I'm really happy with the trees and the nature, but I think I will have to do for clients something uh, different. But if I have time, I will have uh, many flowers around me uh, in the in the next few months. Normally, normally. <laughs> yeah. So we can see behind you. Actually, I want to mention what's behind you is actually um, a bedhead, and yeah. it's a it's a masterpiece that you created. It's looking flat um, on the camera like that, but if we go on your website, we can see the close up photos, and it's actually all in relief. It's it's all in three D. Yes, and it was exactly. quite the uh, quite the job um, oh, to to create uh, that. It it was horrible. When I started, I didn't realize how long it will take. But it is better that like to to, to not to think about because um, in this sort of thing, if you are starting to reflex too much, you will say no, no, it's it's too hard. No, I, I prefer it is better not to start. So I decided to start. And then uh, after three months, uh, it was at least finished. <laughs> and each, each part of the, or each leaves was cut in a different part of the parchment. Then I have painted them separately. Then I have glued them together. And uh, there is 64 leaves. And I couldn't do only maximum six maximum six leaves per day maximum normally it was four right and then you created i mean the wood is completely um uh, oh, completely it, covered in the parchment is, yes everything is in parchment there is parchment here it's but well i cannot say how many pieces of parchment i have used something like uh 10 or 12 uh, skin of uh, goat yes mm -hmm. It is amazing. So, so there was a bedhead and we can see next to you a lamp and I'm going to share the screen again because I have a, a close up uh, photo of the uh, of the lamps. Uh, here we are, we can see that you did that on a lamp, but you've also uh, created handbags, you created I think that you did work on a, on a private chapel. Um, what other kind of projects did you do? For this, with I, I didn't understand the question exactly. Sorry. Uh, 
you created other objects. We saw the lamp that's behind you, yeah. the bed head. You created also, I think, a handbag for someone. Yeah, exactly. In parchment, uh, always in parchment. What the about lamp, the work? Yeah. The lamp is in parchment. The head bed is with parchment and the bag is with parchment too, illuminated parchment. Right. In fact, you, when, if I don't use uh, parchment, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling good. So I have to, uh, I'm happy with parchment. <laughs> <laughs> and you also do restoration of work. Did you create or did you restore a private chapel in a house? Uh, yes, but the, without parchment, unfortunately. <laughs> But uh, sometimes um, I have to, to, to restore some chapel and also some uh, private house uh, with um, um, wall painting. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And I think that we can see all the, uh, the photos on your website yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and, on your, and on your Instagram. Um, well, Thank you so much. I can't see any uh, any other questions in the uh, in the chat box. I don't know if anybody wants to raise a hand or um, uh, put a question in the chat box. Um, yes, here we go. Magnificent, Marianne. Lovely to see you, Marianne. <laughs> Um, so, ladies, I want to uh, to thank you again. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to um, to see you. I missed you. Um, I want to also tell you how deeply touched I am every time you send me a message, and uh, and how delighted I am that these conversations, um, you know, first uh, keep you happy, bring you some some happiness, some learning, a connection to the outside world, which we uh, we don't have now. It's very much one of my uh, one of my goals. Um, as I said at the beginning, connect with each other uh, on this uh, chat box if you want to, or, um, you know, send me an email and I'll be delighted to connect you to each other. Um, I can also suggest that you join the club and, and uh, we connect with each other a lot. Uh, we're going to do the, even more of that. Our next uh, guest next week is an amazing woman. So you know that we are in the uh, cycle of light and she's a glassmaker. Her name is Deborah Ceresco. She won the, um, uh, the prize of the Blown Away series of Netflix. The second series is starting um, on the 22nd, whenever that is, uh, in two days time. She's gonna be a judge on it, but she won the first one. She's a woman who, um, if you watch the series, you will see that the reason why she won is not only that her skills are incredible, but she stuck to her belief and her artistic intent. She took risk every single time. Um, and that really, I think at the end is, is why she won. Uh, she's an amazing person. It's going to be a real treat. I'm really excited to have her next week. So I hope you will join me. And in the light series, we have two more French artists. It looks like... Um, uh, it's the French cycle. We're going to have uh, Lison de Cône, who works with straw. And she creates straw marquetry that is absolutely extraordinary. She is a master craftsman, which in France is the highest honor you can have. She also um, has the Légion d'honneur, which is the equivalent of the, uh, for England, for Canada, the Order of Canada. Um, she really has all the, um, uh, the wins. And the last one is uh, Morgan baroguel Cook, who is a textile artist and um, creates textile that is more like sculpture because she weaves with metal thread. And uh, she's in Aix-en-Provence. She's absolutely incredible. So I hope you will uh, join me for that. Uh, Sophie and Marine, thank you so very much for joining us. And um, please do and visit Sophie's uh, website. I have put it on our, um, on our um, uh, newsletter. I will put it also on the video that you will receive. Have a wonderful rest of the day, evening, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.